And I pray, Lord, you open the pages of the scriptures to everyone in Jesus' name. Make the weak strong. Make the strong stronger. And enlighten everyone in the word of God in Jesus' name. Build up our faith. Build up our confidence. Lift up our hearts unto you. And to know we can cross every river. We can climb every mountain. We can solve all the problems before us. We are not discouraged. We are not looking back. We are not looking down. We are looking up to you. And we pray, Lord, you solve the problems for everyone, confronting everyone in Jesus' name. Energize your people. Build up our confidence in you. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless everyone. I said God bless everyone. We're coming to Psalm 37. Verses 1 to 7. Open your Bible, please. God bless you. It says in verse 1, Fret not thyself, because of evil doers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb that comes to verse 3, trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee, he shall give thee, he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noon day, rest in the Lord. No panic, rest in the Lord. No fear, rest in the Lord. No running away from the post of duty, rest in the Lord. No agitation in the heart, rest in the Lord. No supposition or suspicion that will drive you away from your family, rest in the Lord. And the place where God has put you to lead and to minister, you stay there, everything will be well. Yeah. Rest in the Lord. Verse 7, then it goes on to say, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself, because of him that prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices, to pass. As we look at the passage, the passage talks about confidence in the Lord. Confidence in man is disappointing, and confidence in self is deceptive. As we talk about confidence, we're talking about trust. We're talking about confidence, we're talking about faith. We're talking about confidence, we're talking about relying on the Lord. We talk about confidence, we talk about leaning all your weight, all your mind, whatever the challenge, leaning upon the Lord. You don't want to lean upon man. You don't want to lean upon yourself. In Psalm 118, Psalm 118, it tells us in verse 8, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Generally, because we're human beings, it appears that we find it easier, we find it more convenient to lean on the people we see and to lean on something tangible, something we can see. There's a man there, there's a woman there, there's a rich man there, there's a knowledgeable man there, and lean on him. But the scripture is saying it's better to trust in the Lord that to put confidence in a man. In verse 9, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. 
it, it gets us there to the point that we need to look to the Lord because of his power. We need to look up to the Lord because of his promises. We need to look up to the Lord because he has never failed. He helped other people and he has given us assurance he's going to help us. He'll help you in Jesus' name. I'm talking to you tonight on confidence in God in times like these. Confidence in the Lord in times like these. In times of adversity, we need to trust in the Lord. In times of prosperity, we need to trust in the Lord. In the time of our youth, we need to trust in the Lord. And in the time of our old age, we need to trust in the Lord. In the time of famine, in a time of abundance, we need to trust in the Lord. In times like these, we do well to have confidence in the Lord. What do we have confidence in the Lord? How is it? He calls us, trust me. Believe me, lean on me, rely on me, have confidence in me because his promises cover every need of man. There's no need in your life that is not already covered in the provision, in the providence, in the promises of God because his promises cover every need of man. From your young age to your old age, from the beginning of your life to the very end of your life, that's the reason you trust in him, that's the reason you have confidence in him. His provision is adequate and sufficient. After all, he got those three million Jews from Egypt onto the land of Canaan, and he provided for them every day enough water to drink, enough food to eat, enough sinners, enough protection, enough power, because his provision is adequate and sufficient. That's why we trust him. That's why we have confidence in him. Because his faithfulness is unquestionable. He is faithful. Faithful to the young and faithful to the old. Faithful to the weak and faithful to the strong. Faithful to the ones who are just starting the Christian life now. And faithful to the ones who have started for a long time. And whatever happens, he is strong and mighty. Is great and irresistible. His wonders are innumerable. And whatever may be happening to the people of the world, your needs are supplied. Whatever happens and whatever does not happen, all his sons will find him faithful. All his sons and all his servants, we who are serving the Lord, are you a pastor? He will supply your need. Are you a father, a mother? You believe in the Lord, you are trusting the Lord. It will supply the need in Jesus' name. I just read to you now from verse 1 to verse 7. Let's do this. Let's look at verse 3 of, of Psalm 37. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou be fed. And then he goes on, so, so, so shall thou dwell in the land. Verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and, tro and uh, he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, uh, and he shall bring it to pass. And when you study the scriptures, I'm sure you understand. You cannot just, uh, you know, fly off and just preach and just talk and talk. You look at the scriptures. Look at that verse 3. It says in verse 3, tell me the first line there. Trust in the Lord. And then you come to verse 5. And it says, trust also in him. It's like uh, when you open the bracket, trust in the Lord. When you close the bracket, it says, trust also in him. It's telling you that, number one, as you are stepping out, you're stepping out in ministry. You're stepping out in the family of God. You're stepping out in any project. Number one, open your bracket, trust in the Lord. And then you go on, and as you close, that bracket trust also in him and everything in between those two pillars everything in between those two things trust in the lord and trust also in the lord is telling you keep on trusting keep on trusting he will not fail Amen. and you will not fail as well and let's do another thing look at verse one in verse one fret not thyself verse one fret not thyself and we're coming now to verse 7. In verse 7, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Tell me what follows. 
fret not thyself. You see, he opens the chapter in verse 7, fret not thyself. Then he brings the word of confidence. He says, have confidence in the Lord. And lest you forget, as he goes to verse 7, he still closes another bigger bracket, fret not thyself. Fret not thyself. Fret not thyself. That means no worry, no anxiety. That means there's no panic. That means there's no fear. That means there's no unbelief. That means there's no distrust because everything will be all right. In your life, everything will be all right. In your family, everything will be all right. In the ministry God has committed to us, everything will be all right in Jesus' name. And then the rest of the chapter is just buttressing what he has said. All he's saying is, trust in the Lord. Have confidence in the Lord. Lean on him. Rely on him. Don't ever shift your focus or your mind away from him. Look at uh, verse, uh, I'm looking at verse 11. In verse 11, look at what he's telling us here. It says, for the meek, but the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. It says, that's what I'm telling you to trust in the Lord. Let's look at verse 16 here. In verse 16, it tells us, a little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked, that no matter what the wicked people have, you are going to have more. You are going to go greater. And you're going to be higher than them in Jesus' name. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, the Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and the inheritance shall be, tell me, forever. In verse 19, they shall not be ashamed in the evil time. Any believer there? You will not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. Remember, he has told us within verses 1 to 7, they shall be fed. And now he tells us the same thing in another way. They shall be satisfied. He tells us in verse 23. In verse 23, about uh, this uh, Psalm 37, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. He will lead you in the way. He'll guide you in the way. He delights your way because you delight him. Look at verse 25. I have been young and now I am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. You will not lack. You will not beg. You will give to other people. Look at verse 28. In verse 28, it tells us, For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not. He says, It will not forsake you. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. And in verse 29, The righteous shall inherit the earth and dwell therein forever. And in verse 30, the mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his uh, tongue talketh of judgment. 31, the law of his God is in his heart, and none of his steps shall slide. You will not slide. You will not backslide. You will not fall. The Lord will uphold you in Jesus' name. Verse 34, in verse 34, wait on the Lord. He's still telling you, have confidence in the Lord. He's telling you, trust in the Lord. He's wait for him, wait for him. He's bringing the blessing. Even from tonight, he'll bring abundance into your life. He says, wait on the Lord and keep his way. And he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shall see it. I thought somebody would say, Amen. Amen. Verse 37, Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. Verse 39, but the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength, is your strength, in the time of trouble. Temptation, trial, difficulty, challenge, whatever. In the time of trouble, he will be your strength. And the Lord shall help them. The Lord shall help me. I said the Lord shall help me. 
the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they tell me. At the beginning, it began with trust in the Lord, trust in the Lord. And then he goes through the whole chapter. And at the end of the chapter, he says, all these good things will happen. Because they obey what was said in verse 1. Because they trust him. As I said, I'm talking to you on confidence in God in times like these. We're looking at the message on three subtitles. Number one. Caution against fretting over the godless. Caution against fretting over the godless. Number two, confidence in the faithfulness of God. Confidence in the faithfulness of God. Number three, compensation for the faithful and the godly. Compensation for the faithful and the godly. We're coming to number one. What's number one there? Caution against fretting over the godless, over the sinner, over the wicked. We are cautioned against fretting. Come to Psalm 37, verses 1 and 2. Fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down. Now, it's telling us they shall soon be like uh, it shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb it's telling us here the reason why we shouldn't fret many scriptures actually warn and caution us against fretting against getting worried and against uh, envying the wicked why don't we why shouldn't we envy them why shouldn't we look at them? Why shouldn't we fret? Why shouldn't we bother? Whatever they seem to have and whatever they seem, whatever progress they seem to be making. Number one, their joy is shallow. And